and sing with voices full and strong and ocean surging praise send forth the stir the hymns of all the psalms of ancient days oh rejoice 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 give thanks and sing with all the angels choir and with all the saints on earth pour out the stand of joy and bliss to rapture noblest world oh rejoice 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 give thanks and sing yes on to lifelong path still chanting as we go from you to rage by night and day in gladness and in woe oh rejoice 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 give thanks and sing praise him who reign on high oh the lord whom we adore the father son and holy ghost one god forevermore rejoice rejoice oh rejoice give thanks and sing rejoice rejoice Rejoice, give thanks and praise. How is everyone weak this evening? God have brought us here on this lovely Sabbath. There's so many chaos that happened in this week, but yet God have brought us here yes. to worship in his name. So I just want to welcome each and every one tonight, all of our visitors here tonight. I'm sure that God have brought a special blessing because this week wasn't a, a normal week, you know. It wasn't, it was a trial and tribulation. But guess what? God God came through, and because of God, each and every one of us is here today. So I just want to say welcome and happy Sabbath. I don't know if we're online right now, but if we're online, I just want to say happy Sabbath to those online. And if you're hearing me well, just put a heart emoji if you're thankful for the Sabbath and thankful for this moment that God has brought us today. So, with that being said, I just want to remind everyone about the Global Youth Day tomorrow. Amen? So, we know as youth, God has called us for a special purpose, and that to finish our duty, the Great Commission. So, we're going out in the Kingston area tomorrow, and we're reaching people, ministering to people who need God. So come through 3.30 tomorrow, come through and invite as many persons as possible. We are going to the kingdom. God is coming soon, and we want as many persons in that, because we're not going there alone. And I don't need people, I'm mean, going to know, I need familiar faces in heaven with me as well. So we're going out tomorrow in our colors, in our band, David... John, Daniel, Moses, we're coming through and we're ministering to God's people. We're bringing them home. So come through and I hope you guys have a blessed night tonight. At this time, we're going to ask the deacons and deaconesses to come forward.
collect this evening's offering. All right. But before that, let us pray. Can we stand to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you for carrying us through this week. Thank you for carrying us through all the many trials and tribulations. Thank you for sparing our lives to be here, to be here in your presence, to be here to be able to experience another Sabbath day, to commune with you and to grow and to strengthen or walk with you. Lord, as the deacons and deaconesses come forward to collect this evening's offering, I ask that we will be willing to give, and if we do not have to give, that we will later be blessed. In your name I pray, amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been. Thou forever will be. Lord, your summer and your winter, Lord, your springtime and your harvest, Lord, your sun, your moon, and your stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold, manifold weakness. They sing to thy great faithfulness, your mercy and your love. Give me pardon for every one of my sins and a peace that always endure and thine own dear presence to share and to guide. You give me strength for today. My tomorrow, Lord, your blessings are mine. Say your blessings are mine, and your blessings are mine with ten thousand thrown in beside. Thy faithfulness, Lord, great is thy thy faithfulness. You see, every morning when I wake up, a brand new mercy I see, and all I have need, that thy hands have provided. Lord on to everybody help me say great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy and morning by morning new mercies I see and all I have need that thy hands have provided
thy faithfulness. A quick testimony, a few years ago, I was so depressed, I was having so much warfare in the night, and I remember telling God, I don't think I'm going to wake up tomorrow. And in the morning when I woke up, all I could say, great is thy faithfulness. I was crying and I was I, I couldn't say anything else, but all I could say is, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Now, before a seed is planted, it has to be watered. And when it's watered, that seed is broken into pieces. And when it's broken, it only has to go through the broken part in order for that seed to grow root. And it does, the root doesn't grow up, it grows down, and it gets darker and darker. And we may say, God, why am I going down further? Only to know that God was creating a fixed foundation so we could be strong when that seedling, seedling grows up. And guess what? The plant grows up to the sun. So tonight, God has sent his servant, his special servant, to water our seed tonight on this Sabbath day to bring his message so we can grow strong roots enough to grow to the sun, to grow to God. So tonight, I introduce no other than God's servant, Pastor Clive Dotton, that will bring the message to us tonight that will help us to grow, to go through the night. And tomorrow morning we can say, great is thy faithfulness. And we will be energized. We will be, we have the strength to go through the night. So before I, I um, call up the praise theme to do that um, praise and worship song, I just want us to meditate and, Cl and Pastor Clive Dotting words tonight. It's not going to be no... You hear this man from week, right? He was shameless when it comes to God's word. And sometimes I have to wonder, is this man younger than me? Because he's bringing the energy. And just like Clive Dotting, God is expecting us to bring that energy. So, none other um, from this team song will... Hear from no other than God's servant, Clive Dutton. Don't go anywhere. I'm not crashing the program, I promise you. Let's try this one more time. What kind of week we had? Trial and tribulation. Oh my, you missed that. Try what, what time we had? A blessed one. She said we had a trial and tribulation week. That's a joke. I can't tell you about today. I would be remiss if I did not share this with you guys. When I walked into church this evening, I was called Dr. Darman, right? No, I was called Drummer Boy. If you're not a boy in God's sight, then you're not going anywhere. I woke up this morning and I called Leroy Dallas, the same man that Dr. Um, Dutton said, love, I love it, the food I'm yard, you know. I called him and asked him for a nebulizer because he's my family pharmacist. He says, check another pharmacy. My son was nebulized five times today. And when they did the first from Angel's Hospital, I called President Giles in his capacity. He said, move fast. And when he was nebulized twice, blood taken, everything, I said to the doctor, Dr. Brumfield, I have a seven o'clock function over the church and I need to go home and get dressed and come back. And the doctor said, you might not make it back because you might be heading to Buster Man to Children's Hospital because the x-ray says he has pneumonia. Amen. But the doctor says we're going to be very aggressive less than two hours ago. 
My wife came and picked up my daughters at opposite end of the street, St. Andrew and St. Peter's and Paul, and came to see their brother wired up in the hospital. And I am here at seven o'clock. He was nebulized three more times after five o'clock to make me get here at seven o'clock. If you stand up for God, watch out. I thank you. Great is thy faithfulness. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. Somebody said, There is, there is. Say, stand, everybody. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Somebody say, oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. He is here. He is here. To break the oath and leave the heavy burden. He is here. He is here. To heal a hopeless heart and bless. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, tonight he's in the sanctuary. Let us bow our heads, loving Father. You know the devil is angry. He's angry with your people. He's angry with his subject tonight. He's just a ball of fire. And then he recognizes he has but a short time. And we, as your people, must never forget that we too have a short time. And every day, it is getting shorter. So in spite of the technological challenges tonight, may your grace be sufficient for us. May your power envelop us. May your angels abide with us. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
If you're happy and you know it, somebody say amen. God is good. Oh, when I say God is good, you know what you have to say. God is good. And all the time. Now, as you know, we have a few technical challenges tonight. But we will, we know the devil is at work. But we know that God is mightier than the devil. The subject tonight is Armageddon and Queen of the Black Witches. This is a witch from Britain, all right, who is ex exposed to the Secretary of the British Union, who knew her story well. And I went to England and I saw the place where the devil tried to destroy this child. I was making the point today to somebody. Whether you like him or not, he hates you. Oh, the devil cannot love anybody. I want us to get that. The devil cannot love anybody. He could only hate. So if you love him, you're wasting your love. Uh, are you hearing me, brethren? If you love him, you're wasting your love. So the subject is Armageddon and Queen of the Black Witches. When we go to Armageddon, we think about war. Am I talking to truth, brethren? We are thinking about war. Anytime we think about Armageddon, we are thinking of war. In fact, I should tell you this, the world's top diplomat, the United Nations Secretary General, is saying that we are facing Armageddon. Is what he is saying. And he's saying the Armageddon now will be front of World War I and II. So what he is saying is, we are facing the threat of nuclear annihilation. Now today, if you follow world news today, you will see, my dear friends, where Emmanuel Macron, who is the president of France, was telling Vladimir Putin, turn down the use of nuclear, you know, nuclear words in your language. Because he has threatened almost everybody here. And when he cannot get his way, he's a psychotic beast. That is Vladimir Putin, all right? Because he has threatened to use nuclear bombs. Not once, not twice. So today, all right, history will record that the president of France asked, all right, Putin to tone down his language. He told him it is completely unnecessary that somebody who owns a, a nation, who owns nuclear weapons, all right, should be threatening people to use nuclear bombs on them. So Macron told him to guard his language well. That was the summary of what he was telling him. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Huh? I thank God that Putin is not in charge of this planet. Yes, Did I hear you say amen, brother? Amen. I, I, am, I am happy. Now there are several nations that are juxtaposed close to each other that have nuclear weapons. Huh? And I want you to understand that. There are several countries that are juxtaposed to each other. All right? You have India, for example. There's a, a critical example of the owner of a nuclear weapon. Israel has a nuclear weapon. America has a nuclear weapon. UK has a nuclear weapon. So there are certain specific nations that own nuclear weapons. Now I'll tell you this, sir. There are enough nuclear weapons on the world to destroy the population of the world several times over. In fact, there's a book I read, and the name of the book is Overkill. All right? Overkill is the name of the book. And they were showing you that we could have nuclear weapons being used. And if you multiply the population of the earth by six, you have enough nuclear weapons. All right? To destroy the world and they went on to say if you multiply the new the, the population of the earth by 30 you have enough nuclear weapons to destroy almost 240 billion people now that 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 is serious business my dear friends so the world and i wouldn't touch on chernobyl what makes russia a very dangerous um player on the world stage is that there are many unmanned and unsupervised nuclear weapons since the USSR disintegrated. But I'm telling you, there are, there are nuclear weapons, all right, that have no manager, no supervisor. They are just there. And that adds to the potential danger to this planet. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, you know who we have to depend on? We have to depend on God. We have to trust God, brethren. Trust Him when you're sad and trust Him when you're happy. Trust Him when you're down and trust Him when you're up. Now, I want to tell you this, sir. I want to come to Haiti now. You know, there is a demonic, there is a demonic infiltration in Haiti. Not now, but for some years. But I think it has gotten worse. It has gotten worse when you have a gang leader who is a cannibal. Are you hearing me, brethren? Pay attention, folks. When you have a gang leader who is a cannibal, all right, that should tell you that the coming king is at the door. And that is just one nation, but the other nations I'm sorry you're not going to see the PowerPoint tonight because I had stuff with ISIS and other radical groups, the Fulanis in Nigeria. All right, brethren? The Fulanis in Nigeria, all right, have killed Christians after Christians after Christians after Christians. So in a special sense, the whole world is in turmoil. You know what the Bible says? Men's hearts failing them for fear. And looking after those things that are coming upon the earth and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, if I should go a little quickly, 1940 to 1918, you had World War I. And approximately 20 million people were destroyed in that five-year period. And then, 1939 to 1945, you had World War II. Now, that, that, that is serious stuff. Um, we welcome those who are coming in. Coming quickly, I just started. 1939 to 1945. Now, the figures for the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they are disputed figures, all right? And that was in 1945. Now, I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen, that was 1945. Now, the overall calculation for World War II, World War I was approximately 20 million. The overall calculation for fatalities in World War II was over 70 million. Russia got the brunt of it. It is guesstimated that Russia suffered a fatality rate of about 22 million. So that was not an easy thing, all right? And since World War II, we have more nations owning nuclear weapons. We're not sure about the Middle East. I want to be honest with you. We're not totally sure about the Middle East. But we are talking about Armageddon tonight. And I want to tell you, that Armageddon, that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 16. In fact, we will give, ladies and gentlemen, all right, while he's doing that, Armageddon, I want to tell you, will not be a military war. Armageddon is going to be a spiritual battle. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? Yeah. Three, unclean spirits like frogs, out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast. Out in the mouth of the false prophet. All right? So you have the dragon, you have the beast and the false prophet facing the kings of the east. And the kings of the east will be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So hello there. My evangelical friends are totally wrong on Armageddon. Hal Lindsay and some of these guys. Totally wrong, my dear friends. Because they believe Armageddon will be fought specifically in the Middle East. But you know, let me tell you something. Armageddon will be fought everywhere. Once you have people, there will be Armageddon. Because once you have people, some will be on the side of God, and some will be on the side of the devil. So what I'm saying, every nation in the world, pay attention to this, brother, every nation in this world will have people, all right, some with the seal of God, and some with the mark of the beast. So I tell people, that Armageddon will not be a war between North and South. You know, it wouldn't be just territorial. It wouldn't be a war between East and the West, between the developed world and the developing world. And don't even let the, the, the geopolitics tie you up. Because the geopolitics could tie you up and you will say, Russia and North Korea have mercy and China, all right, will, will, will combine maybe with Cuba, all right, all those nations and fight the Western nations. So you can get hooked up and addicted to the whole concept of the geopolitics of the present world politics. You can get tied up with that, ladies and gentlemen. And we all know the North Korea guy is a, is a loony guy, a psychotic guy himself. We all know that. But what I'm saying, brethren, 
You have to take your eyes off the political interpretation, hermeneutic uh, of Armageddon. Armageddon will be a spiritual battle and the whole world will be involved. It will not just be, oh, hallelujah. Give him a round of applause, my dear friends. When I get rich, brother song leader, when I get rich, he'll be rich too. <laughs> hallelujah. So we, could, we can, um, I, I can use the pointer. Can I use the pointer? Just take down and they will see. Hallelujah. Okay, fine. Let, let's test it out. What? Man. Magic. You know, when I was in school, they had Mandrake, the magician. What if he wasn't born yet? All right? <laughs> Try because he wasn't born yet. Oh, you know, we had that, that Mandrake, the magician, and we had to touch a button, something amazing took, takes place. Not pressuring. You forget all the challenges we have had tonight. God has come through for us there. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Because we don't want you to miss. So let me, let me just continue where I was going just now. So Armageddon will be a universal battle. Number two, it wouldn't be a battle for territory. It will be a battle for the mind. And brethren, if you forget everything else I have said tonight, Armageddon will be a battle for the mind. Satan and Christ will be contending. The commanders, my dear friends, of the two armies, all right, the real commanders will be Christ with those with the seal of God and the devil with those with the mark of the beast. Now, hold a minute. Could I tell you something, brethren? My uncle tried to use a Freemasonic, uncle in law, a Freemasonic ritual to have me removed from the planet. My uncle. And I will tell you the whole story. I did it at your business place. Today, now he was a Freemason, watch it, left Freemasonry and came across to the Adventist church. Left the Adventist church, went back to the Freemason movement. So I tell myself, I don't know where my aunt found him. Lord have mercy. Because my aunt was living with a guy who at midnight was feeding demons. Mm. Let me say this to you, Patrick. My uncle's house burned down flat. It was an upstairs and downstairs. He was a man of some word. Have mercy. And do you know, up to now, and that took place some years over, up to now, the fire service in Belmont, that's in Trinidad. You are, you're almost a Trinidadian, you know, Dallas. Up to now, they don't know how my uncle's house burned down. But let me tell you what happened with my uncle and myself. So my aunt was sleeping with him. She's a woman of great courage. That didn't say she should have stayed with that demon-possessed monster. Are you, are you hearing what I'm telling you, Brother yeah. And she told me this. She says, one night, he took a piece of paper and he put my name on the piece of paper. Brother let me tell you something. When I get up here and I tell you, once God is for you, no amount of demons could destroy you. Yeah. I talking from personal experience. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? I am talking from personal experience. Once God is for you, have mercy. You are well covered. Come on. Covered by the blood. Covered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Covered by the whole armor of God. The breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians chapter 6. Come on, brethren. The shield of faith. The helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit which is the word of God now brethren let me tell you something you have to depend on the word of God you have to depend my dear friends on his grace come on on his blood there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all the guilty stains I have good news for you tonight there's a lot of bad news war everywhere famines diseases pestilences, tsunamis. But I have good news for you. Jesus is coming again. Coming, and end up, coming to put an end to sin and Satan. So my aunt told me, she says, he wrote the name Clive Dutton on a piece of paper and he always had a bottle of acid under his bed. And those he didn't want to stay alive, he would dissolve their names on a piece of paper. Lord have mercy. This is what she told me. Huh? She says, after midnight, the demons would come and he would 
feed the demons. Let me tell you something. Huh? The devil wants us to believe he's not real. He's very real. And he's very hateful. Revenge is spawned at the table of that enemy of our souls. Revenge. And we have got to understand that. And you know what happened to my uncle's house after? After he dissolved me, the house was dissolved. Because the house was burned by a strange mystical fire, flat. And nobody could tell why and how the house was burnt. I, I want you to know there is power in the name of Jesus. You know what the Bible says in Luke 21? Men's hearts will fail them for fear. And looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. But the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Did I hear you say amen, Brother Ringer? The powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then it says, when you see these things come to pass, do what? Look up. Come on, let me hear everybody say look up. Look up for what? Your redemption. Joy it nigh. I want to tell you something. There is hope in the name of Jesus. Did I hear you say amen? What can wash away? Come on, wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can give me peace within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And let me tell you something. When the Bible says, the song says, there is a fountain filled with blood. There is a fountain filled with blood. John from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. You see, World War I, dear brethren. Uh, approximately 20 million people died. Now, nobody's quite sure of the exact number based on what was taking place there. World War II, 1939 to 1945, all right? There's a particular um, statement coming up in one of the slides, which I will explain to you. Because it says that it gives the impression that Hiroshima and Nagasaki, all right, when the atomic bombs were dropped by the Americans on the, on the Japanese rushing, it gives the impression that Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 50 million people died. No, over 50 million people died, all right, during the whole of World War II. In fact, some, some political pundits say 70 million people died. At least, at least 70 million people died. Okay, so what I'm telling you, we have tasted the horrors of war. And I want to tell you, brethren, war was not designed, all right, on the table of the throne room of God in heaven. War was designed by the devil himself. Did I hear you say hallelujah, Patrick? That is how war was designed by the devil himself. God is an awesome God. August 1945, and you will see it there. The atomic bombs fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But the 50 million people were not just for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They said that was closer to 200,000, 150 to 200,000 people. But the entire spread of the war, all right, accounted Brethren, for over, over 70 million lives, the experts are now saying. Now, General Douglas MacArthur sent a strong warning, all right, in September of 1945. I, I went to the Far East, all right, on a liberty program, and I went to the island, all right, where MacArthur virtually lived, where the car he used, an old she black Chevrolet that is in immaculate condition, all right, is still parked there. All right, remember, he's the one who said, I shall return. Hallelujah. And hear what he says. And brethren, I want you to look at this statement. Thank God we got you with part of the computer operations tonight. What he says here, brethren, can we read it? We have had what? Our last chance. If we will not, he's talking about after World War II. He said, we have had our last chance. If we will not devise some greater and equitable system, meaning justice, all right, our Armageddon, so he was one of the few leaders who used the word Armageddon. Our Armageddon will be at our door. Have mercy. Our Armageddon will be at our door. Satan is pushing the agenda that there will be an Armageddon. And man will bring it about. And man will use nuclear weapons like Putin and others. All right? And the little boy in North Korea. All right? Immature guy, the Belshazzar. Of the 21st century. I want you to know that, brethren. But, brethren, I have no fear for any military Armageddon, you know. And I have no fear that God is, God is not going to allow, brethren, any man or group of men to destroy the entire planet. All right? Satan would love that. 
He feels that would help him to escape hell, but that is not going to happen. And I always say, and I, anywhere I go in the world, from India to the Philippines to Thailand to South Africa, wherever I've been, to Holland and to England and to Wales and other countries, I always say that I have the confidence that our God is large and in charge. Did I hear you say hallelujah, Patrick? And we have to, have to study it. So he said we have had our last chance. This is MacArthur saying that. Now, the Pure Research, Pure Research Institute, all right, is the number one research institute in terms of religious persecution. There's no group that is as accurate as the Pure Research. And they said the most persecuted religion in the world is Christianity. The most persecuted. I tell people, in a special sense, Armageddon is the remnant church versus the rest, you know. Did I hear you say amen, Patrick? The remnant church versus the rest. Jump high, jump low. Let me tell you something. Anybody that keeps the commandments of God, including and especially the Sabbath, anybody who believes in prayer, anybody who has extreme faith in God, anybody who is obeying God, anybody who is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and is saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, anybody or group of people who are led by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because remember, Romans 8, 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called uh, the sons and daughters of God. Anybody under all those descriptions are in the above, I'm saying to you, is a target of the enemy. The devil doesn't like anybody to serve God. Hallelujah. When I saw a hundred thousand people recently got baptized in Rwanda, elder, a hundred thousand in one baptism. Did I hear you say hallelujah, Patrick? What I am saying to you, Rwanda, that had so much killing, where an Adventist pastor and all was sentenced to death for participating in the killing. All right, it was that rough in Uganda, Patrick. Uh, imagine there are preachers all over Rwanda and over 100,000 gave their lives to Christ in one baptism. Hello, the Spirit of God is working, brethren. We have a limited time. And until that time expires, uh, the Spirit of God is working. Do you believe that, brethren? Yes. And even in Jamaica, in a big way, the Spirit of God is working. Yes. Angels are flying all over all right, this place. I'm talking about human beings endowed with the power of Almighty God. And we have got to understand that in a special sense, spiritual Israel versus Babylon is what Armageddon is all about. Those with the seal of God. Are you hearing me, Brother Ringer? And, and versus those with the mark of the beast. Uh, three versus three. In terms of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and the angels, you know, against those with the mark of the beast. Uh, who worship the dragon and the beast and the false prophet. Uh, that is Armageddon. Uh, don't let my evangelical brethren mislead you. There is not going to be one place alone. You see, my evangelical friends believe that Armageddon will be fought in the Middle East alone. Hello, Armageddon will be fought all over the world. I want you to understand that. I'm again going to be fought in France. It will be fought in Nigeria. It will be fought in South Africa. It will be fought in Indonesia. That Muslim pop overpopulated area will be fought in India, will be fought in Pakistan, will be fought in Australia, will be fought in Japan, it will be fought in China, it will be fought in Russia, it will be fought in Iraq and Iran and Syria and Saudi Arabia. Armageddon will be fought everywhere, my dear friends, in Canada, in Alaska, in, Aus in Argentina, in Brazil, in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Panama, in Mexico, in Costa Rica, in Trinidad, in Jamaica, in St. Vincent. Oh, in Haiti, all you feel is Armageddon going on there right now. But I'm saying to you, all over the world, Armageddon will be fought. That is why we have to keep our lamps trimmed and burning. Did I hear you say amen, Patrick? Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Look at this, Patrick. Look at this. When this ISIS thing started, let me tell you something. I used to feel, I used to have a terrible feeling in my gut. I used to have a terrible feeling, brethren. I used to wonder, supposing I was one of these fellas here, huh? lying down. Am I prepared for that level of torture? Because what ISIS did, you know, you had ISIS, 
and Yahab is, well now Yahab was, have mercy. But what I am saying is, they beheaded 20 Christians in Ethiopia. 20 Christians. I was in Holland in 2011, and the Coptic Christians were overrun by bulldozers, ladies and gentlemen, in that place. In fact, they were saying the Arab Spring became the Christian winter because the Christians were really suffering as a result. Look what happened in Nigeria. I told you about that just now. The Fulani extremists, they kill what? Hundreds of converts in Nigeria. Hear what happened in Nigeria. They had a major crusade and thousands got baptized. And the Fulani radicals, the extremists, came and they wiped out every one of them. Wiped out everyone. All those who had lined up for baptism, the hundreds of them, all of those, I'm going to say baptism, they become Seventh-day Adventists. Huh? All of them were wiped out, my dear friends. Whole churches were born, burnt in Kenya and also in Nigeria because of the radicals and the extremists. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. We are seeing the rise of global Christian persecution. You see it there also. That is what we are seeing the rise of. And then we have the drug trade. I tell people the drug trade is a platform for Armageddon. The drug trade is worth billions and trillions of dollars. That's the drug trade alone, brethren, worth billions and trillions of dollars. Human trafficking, all right? Human trafficking and pornography are also worth billions and trillions of dollars. And why I say the drug trade is significant is because when you use drugs, you have, you know, a destruction and damage to the mind. So people become paranoid. They become psychotic. They become schizophrenic. They have the law of what the experts call flattened effect, where they can't feel sympathy and empathy for anybody. So they could commit any atrocity, any vile and violent and hurtful and brutal crime. And they don't have no compunction of conscience. That's how terrible it is. We are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. Can we read this text together? It says what? And there shall be water. Signs where? In the sun, in the moon, and water, and in the stars, and upon the earth, what? The stress of nations with what? Perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. What's the next verse? It says what? Men's hearts, water, failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Let me ask you a question, brethren. Do you believe the word of God? You sounded rather weak there. I'm saying, do you believe the word of God? Can the word of God be trusted? Come on, I want to hear you. The word of God can be trusted. Well, the word of God says, in the last days, just before Armageddon, men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming up on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then they shall see who? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall see who, brethren? Come on, let me hear you a little louder. Come on. Uh. They shall see who? The Son of Man. Come in in a cloud with power and great glory. Not as a baby in the manger anymore. He's coming with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, what we must do? Did I hear you say amen? We must do what? Look up. Lift up your heads for your redemption. Joy at night. I want to tell you something, brethren. Our redemption is drawing nigh, you know. Those of you who are not yet baptized, not yet Seventh-day Adventist, not yet belonging to the remnant church. Huh? Our redemption draw it nigh. Now is the time to give our hearts to Jesus. Now is the time to surrender. Now is the time to be washed in the blood, that fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Now is the time. There's no time like now. Revelation 14, 6 to 8. All right, you know the text, brethren? What it says, and I saw water. Come on, let me hear you louder. Another angel of water. Fly in the midst of heaven having water. The temporary gospel. What? What kind of gospel? The everlasting gospel to do water. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. I want to say something to you tonight. You see this word gospel comes from a Greek word. It's a military word. The word for gospel is a military word. And that military word in the Greek is euangelion. And let me tell you what it means. Because we read it and we gloss over it. We don't really know what it means sometimes. It means two armies, a large army that is more militarily advanced and empowered will be facing 
a smaller army. And everybody will say that a smaller army is supposed to lose. And the bigger army is supposed to win. But when they use the word euangelion, it means, brethren, that the army that is the underdog will win. And the army that is expected to win will lose. Now, brethren, let me tell you something. At the end of the world, the remnant will be victorious. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? Because the remnant will be protected by Almighty God. Uh, and the gates of hell, what, shall not prevail against the people of God. Uh, Brethren, I don't know about you, but that excites me. That excites me. I shout hallelujah. I shout praise the Lord. I shout amen. That the world expects the majority to win. All right, because they have the power and they have the weapons and they have everything. But I'm again, it will not be a political battle. Not be a battle involving arms and bombs. Have mercy. It will be a spiritual battle. It will be a character battle. It will be a mind battle. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. And Jesus Christ will win the battle. So if you're on the side of Jesus, you will be a winner. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying, with what kind of a voice, my dear friends? With a soft voice. A loud voice to the water. Fear God and give glory to him for what? Uh, the hour of his judgment is what? Come and worship him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, fear God. That doesn't mean to tremble like if you have Parkinson's disease. Uh, that means to trust God. That means to give God the glory. And in fact, in fact, let me go to Revelation 14:7. When it says fear God and give glory to him. Actually, what the original language is saying, fear God, which is to give glory to him. In other words, what comes without going into the Greek technicalities, what comes after the conjunction and defines what comes before. You think you understand that, brethren? So watch this, watch this. It says fear God and give glory to him. So what, what is the interpretation? Is what comes after the conjunction defines what comes before the conjunction. Are you hearing me, Pratching? So it actually means you could knock out and the conjunction and it could read this way. Fear God, which is to give glory to him. Hallelujah. For the hour, the time, the moment of which judgment has come. When I see about cannibals in Haiti eating people, are you hearing me, Pratring? When I hear about the Fulani radicals murdering Christians, when I hear, Pratring, about what is taking place, the persecution in China and in Iraq, Pratring, when I hear about ISIS, hello, I could tell you, Pratring, that the coming king is at the door. When I think about the amassing of nuclear weapons uh, and interballistic missiles, uh, I am telling you, and Scott missiles, uh, I want to tell you, brethren, uh, that the coming king is at the door, whether you are ready or not. And I want to say this, ready or not, Jesus is coming. Uh, so the time to get ready is now. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? The time to give your heart to God is now. The time to get baptized is now. The time to stand up for Jesus is now. The time to read the word is now. The time to improve our prayer life. That time is now. Hallelujah, brethren. Praise the Lord. I have to run on quickly. All right? And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. We'll come to Babylon tonight in a big way. It's fallen. That great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine, of the wrath, of a fornication. Fornication speaks to a relationship that should not be. All right? It's a relationship outside of marriage or that violates marriage. That is what fornication is all about. And Babylon is guilty of spiritual fornication, mixing of truth and error, a combination that should not be. All right? Holding on to part truth and holding on to error, infected and, and polluted by the devil. All right? And his arch deception. That is what is going on. Babylon means spiritual confusion. It means chaos. That is what Babylon means. That is the outcome of Babylon. Ladies and gentlemen. So they have followed another angel. 
So in Babylon, it's fallen. All these angels in the three angels' messages are human beings, human preachers, endowed with the power of Almighty God. Babylon is fallen. Why? Fallen from the law of God. Why? Fallen uh, from the Sabbath. Babylon is fallen from the dietary standards that God has outlined in the Bible. Babylon is fallen, my dear friends. Uh, Babylon is fallen. Uh, they don't believe in the visible return of Jesus, uh, but in the secret rapture. But I want to tell you something. My Bible says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. There'll be no secret rapture. Are you hearing me, preaching? In fact, I want to tell you that the word parousia does not contain the meaning of secrecy at all. Every eye shall see him. Praise God. Japanese eyes, Russian eyes, African eyes, European eyes, British eyes, American eyes, Caribbean eyes, Central and North and South America, Australian eyes, New Zealand eyes, all the eyes alive have mercy will see the coming of Jesus. You know what shakes me? There are churches with millions of people that believe the 1,000 years, during the 1,000 years, people will have a second chance. They actually believe that. Hal Lindsay and these guys, they believe that, that during the 1,000 years, people will have a second chance. Brethren, if you believe that, you're well deceived. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? Revelation 20 completely destroys that erroneous theology. It will be, my dear friends, it is wrong. While we have life, we have hope. While we have breath, we must serve the Lord. Do it for any second chance because it's not on the screen, but I want to read it for you tonight. As I go along here, I want to read it for you. The subject is Armageddon and Queen of the Black Witches. I want to read this for you. John says, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great change in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years. The devil will be bound because he'll have nobody to tempt. Are, are you hearing me, brethren? And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark in their forehead, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, brethren, let us put the error to rest once and for all. What does verse 5 say? But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, hold a minute, brethren. The 1,000 years, the wicked will not be alive. They would be dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. Look at verse 6. Blessed and holy is he had, that had part in the first resurrection on such a second that had no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years hallelujah Babylon in the Bible means apostasy are you seeing it dear brethren so what's the first thing that Babylon means brethren it means what uh? turning your back on God all right it means spiritual confusion claim to have the power to change times and laws uh, like the Sabbath all right Babylon claims to have that power all right, have mercy. Revelation 16, 12 to 14. We come into the Armageddon now, brethren. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. Hallelujah. Uh, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now watch this, brethren. I'm talking about Armageddon tonight. Three verses three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Verses the three unclean spirits like frogs, out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now hold a minute. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Now that, that, that is symbolic. That is metaphoric. Like in the original Babylon and Daniel 5, when Belshazzar was in charge. Cyrus diverted the river Euphrates and bombarded 
and overtook and destroyed Babylon. Never recovered after that. That was in the year 539 BC. So the river represents people, much people, much people, ladies and gentlemen, a developed nation, all right? It, a very populated nation. Now, you know Babylon, all right? All of Babylon has millions of followers, brethren, millions and billions of followers. And that is why they're described not as the earth or land, they're described as the river Euphrates, water. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Let's go to verse 13. You see it there? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs uh, come out of the mouth of the dragon, uh, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now I want to show you something here. For they are the spirits of devils. Armageddon will be a spiritual war. The people, hello, the devil and his imps, his demons, uh, will be fighting against the people of God. Have mercy, which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Watch this. Frogs. Huh? Frogs versus kings. Like frogs. That is what Revelation 16 says. That is what it says, brethren, if you remember well. Watch this. Watch this. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now tonight we have to reveal this, huh? It's tough truth, but we have to reveal it. So you have the spirits of devils have mercy. Hallelujah. All right? Well, I just got it and it slipped away on the first screen. All right? So watch this. Frogs versus kings. That's what it means. Frogs versus kings. Hallelujah. Okay, let's hold it there. So you, you could see it there very well, but it didn't come on this. All right? Kings of the East. So you're, you're treating me nice. We're not treating the audience nice. All right. So what, what should I do? Change it? Okay, right. I will change it. Okay, praise the Lord. Kings of the East. All right? God the Father. Could you help me with that, brethren? So the kings of the East are who? Was the first one? Come on, let's go. Right? God the Son. And what? God the Holy Spirit. Kings of the East. Accompanied by the angels. All right? And then you have the three unclean spirits like frogs. Out of the mouth of the whole brethren. Out of the mouth of the bees and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now let me shake you with that. Let me shake you with that. Out of the mouth of the dragon. That represents paganism. All those religions that deny that Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus is the Savior. So God the Father, all the Freemasons and all of them, brethren, the odd fellows, uh, all of them, the Russian Crucians. Huh? I had a prime minister. Are you hearing me, brethren? He was a top Russian Crucianist. His name? Dr. Eric Williams. And he was seen at two places at the same time. That's right. And I heard from the American Congress, the same thing happened. You know who was a top class Russian Crucian? Elder Anglin? Henry Kissinger. That's right. He was a top class Russian Crucian. And those fathers believe they have the power of God, brethren. I want you to understand that. They believe they have the power of God. Unclean frigs, frogs, dragon, all the isms, paganism, all the isms, Freemasonry, odd fellows are calling the name big and bold. Are you hearing me, Prashinga? Essentially, they believe that Christ is not the Savior, but Lucifer is the Savior. And they're looking forward to a world after it ends uh, that Lucifer will be in charge. That's the dragon. Who is the beast? Well, I'm giving you a simple answer. The beast is the papacy. A system led by a man, are you hearing me, preaching? Who thinks that God has given him the power to change the law of God. Preaching, let me tell you something. God will never give any man power to change his law. Because he says, I am God and I change not. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. And the false prophet, the two explanations to that. The false prophet, 
is the United States of America. Mm-hmm. So all of you in America listening on, pay attention. Uh, uh, are you hearing me, preaching? The false prophet, elder, is America. I am finished. I am finished. America and the apostate Protestant churches who claim they have power to disobey the law of God, have mercy. And the Sabbath doesn't mean a thing. Let me tell you something. He says, I am God and I change not. So let us review this, brethren. The kings of the East. What's the first king, brethren? What's he? Come on, let me hear you. Let people online hear you saying it. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. The unclean spirits like frogs. Huh? Now you know frogs, what frogs are known for? The deception. You'll see a frog catch a fly and up to know the fly. I know what happened yet. Are you hearing me, brethren? When you see frogs in prophecy, you think about deception. Satanic deception. You think about error. Are, are you hearing me, brethren? You think about the, the, the captivating of the mind for the devil. Huh? Have mercy. Frogs. First frog, the dragon, paganism, and all the secret orders, and all them who deny the existence of God and the salvation power of Jesus Christ. The beast, the papacy, and the false prophet, America, and the apostate Protestant churches. Have mercy. Brethren, you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall set you free. And I know, brethren, the Adventist church is distinguished from the rest. Because we are the only church that preaches the apocalypse. Daniel and the revelation. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? And you mustn't feel bad because of that. If you have a strength, you must thank God and glorify God for the strength he has given you. And, and, and knowing the word and the truth of the word. Come on, brethren. We should be happy. Huh? Am I talking the truth, brethren? It should do something to our brain, to our hearts. We should be excited. All right, brethren, we should jump up for joy and say, thank you, Jesus, for the truth. We have this hope, come on, that burns within our hearts, that in the battle of Armageddon, the kings of the east, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost will overcome the dragon and the beast and the false prophet. Truth will overcome error. Did I hear you say amen? I want to say it again. Uh, truth will be victorious over error. We must praise God. Hallelujah. We must praise God. Are you praising God, brethren? Could I ask you a question? Don't lie now, it's Sabbath. Did you praise God today? Did you bless God today? Did you... It's not what God does to us. It's what we do to God. It's what we do to ourselves. That's the issue of the unpardonable sinner. It is not God rejecting man. It's man rejecting God. I want you to hear that, brethren. So when the plagues begin to fall before the sixth seal and the battle of Armageddon, probation is closed. Our destiny is sealed. The unpardonable sin is there. When you read Revelation 16, you will see where they repented not more than once in Revelation 16. In other words, all those were the mark of the beast huh? in the battle of Armageddon. All of them would have committed the unpardonable sin. They'll have no desire to serve God. How is your desire to serve God today, tonight? Is it stronger? Is it weaker? I heard a loud yes there from one person. One person going to heaven, Lord have mercy. Are you hearing me, Pratring? Uh, uh, destiny is sealed. When the place begins to fall, our destiny is sealed, Pratring. There's no going back. We have no desire to go back. We'll have no desire, those who are sinners uh, and have the mark of the beast, uh, to get rid of the mark of the beast. We'll have no desire to serve God. Uh, we'll have no desire to pray. We'll have no desire to be saved. Uh, we'll have no desire to go to heaven. Uh, this is serious business, brethren. See, there's a door. Watch this. Watch this, brethren. There's a door. When God opens it, not a man could shut it. Are you hearing me, brethren? But there's a door. When God shuts it, no man can open it. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. When God shuts a door, brethren, no man can open it. And when God opens a door, no man can shut it. And I say praise God for Jesus Christ. So the door of mercy is open tonight. Did I hear you say amen? 
That is why we have the crusade. That is why we have the revival. And I'm saying to you, the door of mercy is open. So you must run in the door, run into the ark, run into the remnant church of Almighty God. The door is open. Hallelujah. That we have a gospel that says the door is open. But let me tell you something. And if you agree with me, shout amen. The door will not always be open. You know how long no I preached for? 120 years. And the door was open. Huh? And only when the rain began to fall that they wanted to go in the ark. But an angel, somebody say an angel. An angel with a flaming sword stood guard there. So after uh, the final call was made and the rain began to fall, huh? they couldn't get into the ark. Uh, may I tell you something now? The time to get into the ark is now. The time to say yes to Jesus is now. The time, brethren, to subject yourself to obedience of God is now. And now I come to this story. Ladies and gentlemen, this story will shake you. In the first place I told it, I was in Canada. And parents told me, their children were having nightmares. Brethren, they ain't getting nightmares when they're watching TikTok and Facebook. But they get nightmares when they hear the word of God. But let me, let me give you the story. The story about a girl called Doreen. She became Diana. This is the adult. This girl, Doreen. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Her father was an alcoholic. Lived in East London. This story oscillates between Soho and Paddington. I have been there. I want you to know that. This girl, Doreen, when she was 12 years old, there were 11 children in the family. The father was an alcoholic, and as with most alcoholics, abused the mother. So she walked off. The husband, all right, got married. Again, had another child. And Doreen, 13 going on 14 decided it was time to her to leave because she couldn't take care of 12 kids. It was time for her to leave. Let me tell you something. Huh? When you see God wants to save you, nobody can stop him. You know? Did I hear you say amen, brother? When you hear this story of this girl, the only job she could get was a job of a prostitute. 14 years old. A 14-year-old prostitute. Have mercy. And she went to work as a striptease dancer. She stripped herself naked. Night after night. At 14, she prostituted herself. And then in the nightclub, she was introduced to heroin. Not just ganja and cocaine, but the hardest of the hard drugs. Apart from ecstasy, of course. Heroin, ladies and gentlemen. She was completely depressed. She was suicidal. She wanted to get out. And one night, she had just turned 15. And she heard two, all right, of Satan's children. They, were, they had sold themselves to the devil. She heard one word, Los Diablos. Los Diablos. And they were saying after midnight, they would go. Doreen was such a frustrated child. Let me tell you something. Doreen had injected a, a, a vein on her hand so many times. The adult drug dealers in the nightclub couldn't find a place to inject her anymore. She, she had lost it. Have mercy. That's the devil's plan for all of us. To lose it. To lose our sp spiritual center of gravity. Have mercy. Not to be sober or sane. Huh? She met two Satanists. My subject tonight is Armageddon and Queen of the Black Witches. Ladies and gentlemen, the girl stole her, the two adult women. We will carry you and you will meet Los Diablos. Just as I would love to meet him. But we have to blindfold you. Those are the rules. Until you become a member of the satanic cult, you have to be blindfolded. When she reached the hall, a big aristocratic hall and she looked through the window all she was seeing is Rolls Royce and Benz and what have you there huh? 
And then she looked, there was an airy feeling. There were 13 chairs on this platform. 13 on the platform. Eventually, 12 people occupied 12 of the chairs. And then Los Diablos appeared, completely saturated with the power of Satan. He sat down in the chair. And when he sat down in the chair, a white cockerel passed. Using what we call psychokinesis, he commanded the bird to stand still and broke the neck and pulled that chalice out and the blood was drained out into the bowl. Have mercy. The blood! And now she recognized why the two adult prostitutes and satanic worshippers didn't want to bring her. That is where she found herself. In the middle, after the seance was finished, all right, and he drank his blood from the bird that he broke the neck while suspended in space. Hello, I want to tell you something. Huh? The devil has power, but my God has all the power. <laughs> Did I hear you say amen, brother? And if God wants to snatch you from the jaws of the devil, that's exactly what God will do. And no amount of demons could stop him. I am saying that. That's right, sister. I am saying uh, when the God wants to save you, the devil can't stop him. Uh. All the armies of hell can't stop him. Whether your problem is heroin or cocaine or alcohol or nightclubs or carnival or gambling, whatever, whatever is your problem, the devil can't block God. Once you have a desire to serve God and a desire to be free, because you know the Bible says in John chapter 8, when the Son had set you free, you're free indeed. Power in the name of Jesus. Did I hear you say amen, brethren? So they took her to the satanic cult. After the meeting was finished. After the meeting was finished. The two adult prostitutes and satanic worshippers, disciples of Satan, carried her to meet Los Diablos. And he told her that she was specially chosen by Lucifer to perform a certain role and to become queen of the black witches. In the ensuing months, Doreen did astral traveling. You know what astral traveling is? When you're under the control of Satan, all right, guess what happens? You see the world and the cities pass before you. It is called astral traveling. Many of the lords practice that in a big way, all right? She was to be initiated, all right? She was initiated. And Los Diablos told her, the head of that satanic coven or cult of witches. Oh, the devil told her, through Los Diablos, the guy who was the high priest of Satan, told her that one day, if she lived right, that means to obey Satan, huh? she would become the queen of the black witches. They sent her out to, to confuse a preacher, all right, in a place in England called Dartmoor. Huh? And he was saying, that it would never, my dear friends, I want you to see what she said. It would never, all right? There are no witches in England. He said that. And the devil told this girl, you have to go and confuse that preacher. Cause a dark cloud to fall upon him. She went in a place called Dartmoor, well known in England. Well known in England. And when she went there, have mercy. You know what happened, brethren? What, when she went there, I'll tell you what happened. Watch this carefully here. All right? They took her to the satanic cult. Let, let's get that slide. All right? They took her to the satanic cult. Right? That's where we are to be initiated into Satanism. And then he gave her instructions. She performed astral traveling. All right? Now, she was still in the striptease business. But she took a holiday from it to be firmly inducted into the rituals of the devil. Now hold a minute. You know what happened to her eventually? Doreen was sent to kill the preacher. All right? She was sent to kill the preacher at a tent meeting. All right? Like the one you will see. That is it. She was sent to kill the preacher at a tent meeting like this. Now I want to go through this with you. Very carefully. Before we close off tonight. I want to go through this with you. So she went at the back of the tent. As she went up the back of the tent, the preacher was, uh, was empowered by the Holy Ghost. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Amen. Oh, no, only, only if we are empowered by the Holy Ghost, we could fight the devil, you know, brother? I have a story to tell you about a Hindu 
who was worshiping the devil after he left the Christian church and went back to Hinduism. That's for tomorrow morning. But I want to tell you, brethren, we have no protection. We have no sanity. Are you hearing me, brethren? We have no peace of mind unless we are serving God. Did I hear you say amen? But no man can serve two masters, you know. Uh, are you, am I talking to you, brethren? You can't serve two masters. I want to emphasize that. So she was sent to kill the preacher. She had some very long nails. Those who like long nails, remember this? <laughs> Hallelujah. She went to kill the preacher. She had a knife in her purse. And the preacher, being filled hello, with the power of God, said, somebody has entered the tent. And the agenda is to kill somebody. He didn't say to kill him. The agenda is to kill somebody. And then he went on preaching and said, Satan has possessed a young person. And that young person that just come in the tent. The devil got angry. He told Doreen, don't waste time. Are you hearing me, preaching? He told Doreen, pull back the screen if you don't mind. Don't, don't, yes. Don't, 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 don't waste time. It was towards the end of the service. All right? The preacher flashed a picture of the cross with Christ bleeding. It, it occupied Doreen's mind. Are you hearing me, preaching? For a good while, occupied her mind. Now, at this time, she was already initiated queen of the black witches. Huh? At this time, she was already, she was coronated. And that night, whenever they had coronation, for those who would lead the coven, of witches, hear what will happen. Huh? The devil would appear in the stage in burning fire. And the person coronated as queen of the black witches would have to go in the middle of that fire. And if, if, if she was not consumed, huh? have mercy. Then, then she would be coronated. So she was coronated in the same hall where she was introduced to Los Diablos. Fire appeared on the screen. The devil appeared in the fire. She came up. Uh, and after, after surviving the fire on the stage, uh, the whole witches' congregation shouted, Hail Diana, queen of the black witches. She was no longer Doreen. She was Diana, queen of the black witches. Her first assignment as queen of the black witches was to go to the tent and kill the preacher. Have mercy. So she went inside the tent, my dear friends. The preacher identified that there was somebody there, and she went up to the altar. The preacher took off the lights, huh? and it appeared on the screen that the pit here was no longer still, but blood was dripping from the hands on the screen. Huh? Let me tell you something. The devil has power, but God has more power than him. Did I hear you say amen? And you know what song the preacher used? I will follow thee, my savior. Huh? And we will use that song in a short while. I will follow thee, my Savior. Let me tell you something, brethren. God is an awesome God. And I trust God. And I know uh, that he has more power than the devil. Doreen ended up on the stage. She's now Diana, queen of the black witches. She ended up on the stage, brethren. And she made an attempt, pulled out the knife to stab the preacher. And before she could do anything, the Holy Ghost threw her down. Did I hear you say Amen. You know, there's a text that I love. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath, come on. Somebody say underneath. Uh, are the everlasting arms. Praise God for Jesus. Praise God for his omnipotence. Praise God for his omnipresence. Uh, for, praise God for his omniscience. Uh, she was flat on her back. Have mercy. And the preacher concluded the message. After the message, the preacher told her, I want to see you. Have mercy. He told her, that God has a plan for her life. And tonight she must accept. She says, preacher, I'm now queen of the black witches. I can't get away from Satan. You know what he told her? When the sun had set you free, you're free indeed. She didn't get victory that night. It took her six months. The devil possessed her. She got the victory. Possessed her. She got the victory. Possessed her. She got the victory. And one day she went to a remnant church preacher. Come on. Come on, somebody shout amen. Uh. She went to a remnant church preacher and he cast out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everyone 
of those satanic spirits that invested her, saturated her body. Are you hearing me, Brother Jane? In fact, before she went to that Redmond church preacher, she went to another preacher. And when he heard her story, she said, he, said, he told her, that case is too big for me. That is not for me at all. That's for somebody else. And she went to the remnant preacher and got victory. But let me tell you something. 25 years after, she still has the victory. Did I hear you say amen, brother? I want to say it again. 25 years after, come on, put your hands together. Jesus gives us the victory. Jesus is an awesome God. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on. Let me, let me see if you remember the sign. Come on. Come on, let's go, let's go. Ah. Doreen has her own children. She is serving God. And in a place called Paddington in London, she has set up a home for abused girls and single parents. Are you hearing me, Patrick? When you get saved, it's not to hug the salvation for yourself, you know. It's to save others. By the grace of God, did I hear you say amen, brother? When you are saved, brother, you have to preach it. We have heard the joyful song. Come on. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And I want to say tonight, he's still in the saving business. Tonight, he wants to save you. Tonight, he wants to cover you with his blood. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, come on, son. I will follow thee, my Savior. If you love the Lord and you want to be saved, brethren, we have the pity on the screen. Lovely. That's a pity that attracted Doreen. God, brethren, has a plan for your life tonight. God wants to save you tonight. God wants to heal you tonight. God wants you to make a decision to surrender all to Jesus. If you want to be saved, can you stand as we sing this song? Hallelujah. I will follow thee, my Savior, whatsoever my Lord may be. Hallelujah. Where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord, I'll follow thee. I will follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed Thou did thy shed. blood for me. And though all and men. And though all men should forsake thee. And by thy grace, Hallelujah. I'll follow Hallelujah. thee. Let's sing the second verse. Anybody wants to join her? Surrender your whole life to God. Keep his commandments. Join the remnant church through baptism. You want God to bless you tonight. You want God to save you. Wherever you are, Thou hast trod take that walk of surrender. Take that walk of faith tonight. God wants to bless you. God wants to save you. I will follow. I will follow thee, thee my Savior. Savior. Thou didst shed. Thou didst thy shed. blood for me. And though all men should all men should forsake thee, by thy grace. I'll follow thee. Before we sing, yeah, before we sing the last verse, I want to make an appeal to those you're not yet baptized, the Seventh-day Adventists, by emotion. You need to surrender your life to God tonight. Like God rescued Doreen, He will rescue you. God has a plan for your life. You don't know how he will do it, but you trust that he will do it. Amen. That he has the power to do it. Does God have the power to change our lives? You want God to change your life. You want to walk in a watery grave of baptism. Pastor, you were tied to the next church that has partial truth. We have come to this remnant family. And God wants to save you. God wants to liberate you. God wants to bless you. God wants to shield you. God wants to protect you. Perhaps you are the one God wants to save tonight. 
You have gone so far, but you have stopped. You have stalled in your Christian experience. You may be a child. You may be an adult. But God wants to save you tonight. That is God's plan. Would you cooperate with God's plan? God wants to save you tonight. So, brethren, I want to appeal to those who are here. You want to put your hands in the hand of the man Christ Jesus. You want to put your hands in the hands of the man that still the sea, that were nailed on Calvary's cross. Who will step forward now and, and demonstrate faith in God, that God has all the power to change your life, to save your life. All right? Those who want to come forward now, you know, and let the Spirit of God come inside. God wants you to be changed tonight. Parents, if you have a child not yet firmly committed or baptized, bring your child up to the altar. You know, if you have a friend next to you, you know that friend, appeal to the friend, Bible workers and others, appeal to that friend to come to the altar, to be saved by grace through faith. That's the only way we could be saved, by grace through faith in Jesus. So as we sing the last verse, I am appealing to you, all right, to let the power of God come into your heart and do what God wants you to do. Because nobody else can save you except the man on the screen, the man on the cross. Nobody else can save you but Jesus. So let's sing the last verse, Elder. Who will Go come forward? to John and rolling billows, cold and deep. Who wants to come Thou forward? leadest me. And surrender to Jesus. Thou hast crossed the ways before me. Oh, yes. And I'll still, I will still will follow thee. Wherever you are. I will follow thee, my Savior. Follow Jesus Christ Thou tonight. It share Let the power of God for me. come into your heart and life. And though all men should forsake thee, by thy, by grace. thy grace, I'll follow thee. Let's sing the chorus again. I will follow, I will follow thee. thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. My final appeal before I pray. Do you feel a need for more power of the Holy Spirit to give you the victory? If you feel the need for more of the Holy Spirit's power to give you the victory over whatever it is that is not right in your life. I want you to come forward tonight too. You want a greater level amount of the Holy Ghost. Forget who is watching. That is not important. Because people can't save us. Huh? In the end is Jesus and Jesus alone. You feel a need for more power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is there somebody else coming? Softly and tenderly. Sing an evangelist. Softly and tenderly. Jesus. You feel a need. Is calling. For a fresh supply of grace. Calling for you and for me oh hallelujah god wants to save you tonight see on the portal he's waiting and watching he's waiting and watching watching for you and for me waiting for you and for me hallelujah Come home, come home, come home, come home, come home. Yes, hallelujah. Be you are weary, come home. Earnestly, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling 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 oh sinner 
come home. Let us pray. Loving Father, you are calling us softly and tenderly. As Elijah heard your voice in the cave, after he had a marvelous experience on Mount Carmel, an experience of victory where you consumed the sacrifice and proved that you are the God above all other gods. There was the wind, there was a storm, and then he heard your still small voice. Loving Father, your still small voice is speaking to us. There are people here who need to get baptized tomorrow. They need to surrender your life. Their lives, they need, oh God, to accept you as their only and personal Savior. They need to follow the Word of God. They need to follow the Bible. They need to stretch forth by faith and hold your hands. Lord, I pray for those who are here who understand that they need to get the victory and they have come up to the altar. Lord, we pray for those online who know they are not yet saved. They're online. They have heard the word. They are convicted. Help them, O God, to take that card, that online card, and sign their name to be committed to you. To start with the watery grave of baptism, Lord. To be committed to you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit to get the victory over every sin. I pray, O oh God, you will justify them. I pray, O oh God, you will sanctify them. And when you come in the clouds of glory, loving Father, that they will be saved and safe in the arms of Jesus. And so until tomorrow morning at 8, have faith in God. Jesus is your best friend. Have faith in God. He will save you till the end. Have faith in God. His spirit comes from above. Have faith in God. One day he will fill you with his love. Have faith, dear friend, in God. If you love the word tonight, could you say amen, brethren? Could you say hallelujah? You may go to your seats as we close off. have been a blessing Isaiah 41 verse 10 is one of my favorite verses it says do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand on December 25 on December 23 2017 I started my journey with God. But the first time I came to this church, I told myself I will never come back. And by one person, life with God inspired me to come back. I went straight up to the pastor and said, I want to get baptized today. I could die tomorrow. I want to get baptized today because I grew up going to church was a punishment for me. But Saturday and Sunday, I remember a pastor come to me trying to drag out some demons that would, would in me because I, I had this anger problem because I was stammer and no one would listen to me. So instead I would fight. But God saved me in so many ways. Amen. And now I'm working for him. My family came and they said, there was no way Talia is getting baptized. They came here themselves. I had a world of jewelry. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'll take it. There's no way you're letting them go. I let everything go. And my aunt came here and said, if you get baptized today, I believe in God. 
came here seven on seven o'clock. Who really wanted to get baptized? I was like, Pastor still wants time for my baptism. It was like, oh Talia, second service. I was like, crazy. <laughs> but today I'm standing here recognizing God as my only way, my only truth, and the life that I live. So with your life this week, we can walk with God. And being an inspiration of your walk can inspire someone like me to come and never go and, and never turn back. So I want to thank everybody for coming here this mor- tonight. And uh, looking forward to see you tomorrow. And as before, I'm inviting everybody to come out 3.30 tomorrow with your colors and your bands. Remember, we're ministering to people. We're bringing people to God because in this time and age, people need God more than ever, especially our young people. And when our young people is on fire for God, we only know that it's God. So have a great night and enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Thank you for everybody for coming out. God bless. Sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary There is a stillness in the atmosphere Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary God is here He is He is here He is here to break the oath and leave the heavy burden For